welcome you are looking to pass that real estate exam the topic is going to be on antitrust laws so whether you are doing the exam under PSI exams or you are doing it through Pearson view this is a session for you we're going to cover the four price fixing group boycotting allocation of customers and markets and tie-in agreements when you're ready let's schedule an appointment for us to go through a tutor session with you or check out the other videos that are here to help you further your growth into passing the real estate exam take care let's get started on this antitrust laws when it comes to antitrust laws, we are once again going to limit this to the conversation of price fixing, allocation of customers and markets, group boycotting, and tie-in agreements. When you're going to take the exam, there are two testing facilities or two major testing facilities in our country. It's almost half and half. About 24 are under PSI testing facility, and that's in the example of like me here in Maryland. The website you would go to to get your candidate bulletin, which is very helpful, that gives you a breakdown of the question is presented, candidate.psiexams.com. The other half or so of the country is going to be exposed to Pearson View. And that's the website presented, home.pearsonview.com. Whichever one you're going to be exposed to, depending on your state, go to their website and get the candidate bulletin. The topic of antitrust is covered on the PSI side. It's labeled under practice of real estate. Under practice of real estate, you're going to be engaged with these topics. The trust or escrow account, some of us know that as the honest money deposit. What is the purpose, the responsibility of who's going to be holding it, and so forth. It goes into fair housing. There's a video on our YouTube channel that will help you with the review of fair housing. It goes into advertising as you are doing this business and promoting yourself. What do you need to be aware of? What are your responsibilities in terms of the relationship that you have with your broker or managing broker or supervising broker, whatever you title it in your state? Are you going to be an employee or an independent contractor? The focus today is on what? Antitrust laws. What are they? Why do they exist? And what happens when somebody violates those rules? That's what we're going to focus on today. The other half of the country is going to be exposed to Pearson View, and the topic of antitrust laws is found under the topic of real estate practice, where you get questions about what is the responsibility of the broker when we have agreements between the broker and the client. This is again on the Pearson View side. We then get into the conversation of what is involved in a buyer representation, what is involved in a property management, how do these agreements end, compensation, fair housing. You notice some similarities and some differences between Pearson View and PSI, risk management. And then we have the antitrust laws, which as you can see, that's what we're going to be talking about. So I just wanted to make sure that I invite anyone, no matter where you are in the country, this is a conversation that will be applicable to you, whether you're exposed to PSI or Pearson View. What Brenda is speaking about today in reminder is what is price fixing? What is the understanding of allocations of customers and markets, group boycotting, and lastly, tie-in agreements? When we're looking at questions on this particular topic, please remember I am narrowing it down in order to help someone pass the real estate exam. So I might oversimplify it in order for the content to hopefully make sense when you see a question. We start off with who's one of the people that is enforcing these laws. It is the Federal Trade Commission. Sometimes the Department of Justice will step in as well. 
but the overall person for exam purposes is FTC, Federal Trade Commission. And what are the antitrust laws? Why do they exist? They are there to prevent monopoly where a company isn't too big and restrictions of competition or free trade. It is also referred to as the Sherman Act. So when you see questions of according to the Sherman Act or according to the antitrust laws or the rules from FTC, we're all talking about the same thing. When we are addressing these four violations, please keep in mind we're referencing two the brokers, different brokers coming together and then forming these agreements, which are illegal. You as a broker or your broker can set up rules for themselves for their company or entity. And you as a licensee can also set up your rules for yourself as to how you're going to conduct business. So to simplify this, again, I'm going to echo the point of this is where more than one broker, company green, company yellow, company blue, company pink, red, white have come together and now they are forming these agreements which would be considered as illegal. The first one is price fixing. What is the understanding of price fixing? Again, this is illegal. This is where brokers come together or companies come together and they're setting the prices. They say, you know what? We all need to raise our prices. We need to charge this or we need to reduce it to this. This is where more than one company are coming together and they're setting their price. That is illegal. However, each broker can set their own prices. What does that mean? Company Pink can decide what is their minimum compensation that they're going to charge. And then Company Green will have something different for their company. What is illegal is where these two companies come together and they set the price. That's price fixing. Commission is negotiable between the client and the broker. It is different in different transactions and scenarios. Here, price fixing is avoiding making it seem as if the price is the same throughout different brokerages. Allocation of customers or markets. This is where, again, more than one company comes and has an agreement with another where they're saying, you know what, you're better as dealing with this particular area. We're not going to compete with you. This is your area. Take it away. Or, hey, you're better at serving this type of clients or clientels or clientele, sorry. So we're not going to compete with you. If every, anyone comes and they're a first time home buyer or they're buying under a million, this is for you. We're going to tackle this type of clientele. Tell. So once again here, when we're talking about antitrust laws, it's competitors, companies, brokers, different companies coming together and setting up these agreements. So they're dividing it up based on geographic or territories or the type of customers, agreements between the brokers for them not to compete against each other based on the market or the type of customer. Again, this is the brokers doing that, which is illegal under the topic of antitrust laws. The third one is group boycotting. You're boycotting. So just the word boycott is where you're saying, no, I'm not going to do this, right? Because of whatever it is. And the word group is, again, more than one broker coming together and now they're performing this. So group boycotting is where you're trying to shun or to eliminate or to shut down a competitor. So an agreement between different brokers come together and they say, we're not going to do business with this particular company because they're disrupting our business or whatever it is. That is group boycotting. It is illegal. So here, just to simplify it, two companies come together and let's say they tell their agents, we're not going to show any of the properties listed by that company for whatever reason. 
that is group boycotting an agreement amongst different brokers to again not to do business with a certain individuals or companies or businesses or maybe you're making it hard for companies to get into the market so companies have come together and they're making it difficult for another to come in and become a competitor that is group boycotting the last one is tie-in agreements tie-in agreements is where you are forcing and not given a choice to the consumer who might end up being a client and letting them that you have to, in order for you to do this, you have to get this. The simplest example that I might have is we do have arranged business agreements or arrangements, which allows a company to have a home inspection company, to have an appraisal company, maybe property management, they have financing, they have a title company or escrow agent, all all in one stop shop. It is okay for a company to do that as long as they disclose. Tie-in agreement would be where the only way you're going to work with Brenda as a real estate agent is consumer buyer. You have to work with my lender and I'm not giving you a choice. It is something that you have to do. That could is considered as a tie-in agreement and most of the times it is not favorable. So this is where maybe the lender is going to be charging a little bit more than what the consumer might get with another lender. So that is what is for simplicity purposes, tying agreements has the restrictions put into place where the person doesn't have a choice to shop around. Those are the four. When the companies are found guilty of violating these particular laws, then the penalties are up to 100 million for a corporation. If it is an individual, it is a million dollars and up to 10 years in prison. Definitely take the time to continue this particular conversation. I welcome us to connect online. Online social media, I go by Brenda Kasuva, or you can find me under training with Brenda. You're welcome to scan the QR code that is presented on the right-hand side. Let's make a difference by you attending one of our group coaching sessions or tutor sessions that we offer on a monthly basis. Better yet, we are adding to our YouTube channel. Find more content there. I will see you next time. That was awesome, right? You like our style? I look forward to helping you reach your goal of passing the real estate exam. We offer group coaching sessions on a monthly basis, and we also have tutor sessions that would match your availability. Show the love. Go ahead and subscribe. Put your comments in the video here, and we shall respond. Go ahead and like. Share it with your friends. I look forward to helping you reach your goal of passing the real estate exam.